Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well. Today we are looking at another budget motherboard of the B660 range. This is from MSI. Managed to get some MSI products back on the channel. It's been a few years since I've looked at anything from them, so it'll be interesting to see how things have progressed over the years. I will do a separate video on the cooler just for anyone that's interested. It's got quite a cool screen on it and stuff like that. Um, and I'm going to put a little build together using the parts here. Then also not necessarily things that I would put together if I was to spec out a build myself. So if I was to use a cooler like this which is over 200 pounds i would say to get a z690 board and pair it with something like a 12700k would go a little bit better but considering that i've got all these parts I just well build something with it as well so the b60m more to wi-fi msi do have loads of different models as well there's ones without wi-fi there's ones with wi-fi you can get this board with ddr4 if you want to get ddr5 this is the ddr5 version there are a few little differences you can get a black variant as well so there's also the bazooka series there's quite a lot of motherboards that are around the uh b660 that msi do so in terms of other accessories we've got case badge dvd do people do we really still need to provide those nowadays um stickers some just some product info uh installation guide of course a manual very helpful to see what front header pins you need there's another one of those little latching things for m.2s a couple of sata cables wi-fi antennas as this is the wi-fi model and these which is like a little keychain screwdriver that's pretty cool if you don't happen to have a bigger version so as i mentioned this is the wi-fi model and b660m so it is matx you can get full size um, atx motherboards they do as well so different case form factors and things like that now, the cooler that I've got with this kit is a 360, so I'm going to have to use a full-size case. So it will look a bit weird using an MATX board with a full-size case. So that's another one of those mismatches that I said about with this kit. But see what we can do with it. I might end up using a graphics card vertical mount just to make things a little bit different, kind of cover up the bottom area. We'll see what happens. So let's run through the board. So we've got two eight pins at the top, EPS power, big old chunky heat sinks for the VRMs. I'm actually going to run this with the 12600K just because I want to see how the VRM temperatures and things are with the higher end SKU. This was one that was very kindly sent out by SCAN. Um, if you don't know who they are, they're a UK retailer. They sell everything in the way of components. You can even get these motherboards, coolers and the power supplies on the SCAN site as well. So should you want to check out any of the products, I will link them down below. And thank you again for them sending me this processor we've got our ddr5 dim slots 128 gigabytes of support i believe with this one i will put the frequencies on the screen as well for argb and headers and things we've got a cpu fan on the top right of the board there's one for the pump so there's two there's also uh, one down here system three and there's also one just above the m.2 so four fan headers it looks like not a massive amount but i think it should be you know should be sufficient in terms of rgb we've got a addressable 5 volt at the top there's also another one down i saw another one here another addressable and you also got a 12 volt there on the bottom left so a few different rgb options we've got a usb c so this should be usb 3.2 type c and then you've also got a usb 3 header as well so if you've got any front panel usb connectors you can plug them all in there our m.2 slot i shall take this cover off just to have a look underneath this is the gen 4 socket we've got a big old thermal pad for transferring the heat onto this nice bit of machined aluminium we've got our gen 4 socket and then there's another nvme slot down below it looks to be the same as the other one in design so yeah you've got another thermal pad underneath so of course our lga 1700 socket i'm going to use as i said the 12600k for this but they did send a 12400 with the um, media kit but like i said i do want to test out the vrm groaning and things like that a bit more go to the rear and look at the io so we've got uh, four usb 2s there's a display port on hdmi should you be using a SKU that has onboard graphics there's three usb type a's a usb type c two and a half gig ethernet the threads for our wi-fi antennas and then you've got some audio options one thing i just noticed which is quite cool they've got avoid collisions on the back where you screw it into your case and there's where the heat sink is on the back on the other side you've got the screws those are the ones you definitely want to keep away from the back of the case because that will without doubt create a short same with the ones at the vrms at the top so just a nice little uh thing to you know catch your eyes and make sure you get your correct standoffs 
So I mentioned the 12600K I'm going to use for this. I'm also going to use a set of Kingston Fury RGB Beast. This is the DDR5 um, for this, and we shall load that all up. I've got a set of 6000 megahertz, which is non-RGB, but I think 5600 megatransfers is you know, more the um, common sweet spot you're going to see with these boards. So I think now all we need to do is get everything unpacked and get building. Okay guys, so I've done our test system. This is the Corsair 4000D. I've got my RTX 3070. I put in there on the side mount with the Gen 4 riser cable. The uh, SSD I've used is the Seagate Firecuda 530 Gen 4 drive. Um, I've also used the Kingston Fury RAM I mentioned. That's the 5600 mega transfers. It is running at 4400 though, because I can't seem to get into the BIOS. It might be a case of you know taking out the battery for the CMOS and stuff like that, but this has got to be rotated and I haven't got the time to really test and diagnose that. But all the tests I did at you know 4400, so you know, fast anyway. Uh, I've also used the power supply from MSI, so the MPG A1000G power supply. Filling modular, that was an absolute breeze to install. So as I said, I wanted to use a 12600K to push the VRM and MOSFETs a little bit more. As you can see by our hardware monitor, high on the MOSFETs of 45.5, so absolutely nothing to worry about. That VRM heatsink that's all the way around the top has done a very good job on cooling. I think also partly the pump on the cooler as well with that little fan um, has helped as well. You can't actually turn that all the way off. I found you have to have it at least 20%. So um, I would like to see what it would be like if it wasn't on there at all, but for that I'd have to uh, you know, go in and actually like take the cable for the uh, the fan off and things like that. And I just, again, as it's a rotation sample, just don't have the time to do that. So just a couple of things before we end out the video. Um, this isn't the ideal setup. I wouldn't really recommend using an MATX board with a full size case. It just looks a bit a little bit weird. So that's why I went with the vertical mount just to kind of cover the, the uh, blank space at the bottom. Um, and as far as I know, I don't think there's a MATX case that supports 360 radiator. It's just generally not something you see. Um, so you either have a gap or you use a smaller radiator. So, you know, in an ideal world, we would have used the 280 variant, but um, the 360 is what we got given. So, you know, we did what we could. In terms of the price and performance that you get from the B660M board, uh, it's really feature packed for the price. The IO is really good as well. If you're someone that uses a lot of front and rear USBs like I do, you've got rear USB, you've got the header on there as well, which I've plugged in for this case. So, you know, you're absolutely loaded for options there. And then the VRM cooling and everything was very good as you saw. So you'd have no trouble running a 12600, maybe a 12700 uh, in this board if you wanted to. You don't have the overclock support that you would have with a Z690 board, but if you're looking at a more budget rig, then you know you do lose out on some features, but you do save money. So, you know, it swings and roundabouts. So that's been a little look at the MSI B660M Mortar Wi-Fi motherboard. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Not something overly too in-depth, but I wanted to do a little bit more than just a standard overview of the board um, as we had the other components here as well. So I hope you've all enjoyed it. Any more questions, do let me know down below and I will uh, get back to you. I'll put the links and stuff in the description should you want to pick one up. And thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.